understand this hero a little bit better. And it feels like some teams still just aren't uh, devoted to doing that because some teams will first pick it, uh, like we saw from Fnatic. Worked out well for them, mm -hmm. obviously, just by having an entire draft try and counter it. So, uh, yeah, that's the question. I like the fact that Pi was given tips, though, in between the panel. I mean, what is that? <laughs> just like, yeah, pick Nature's Prophet. Oh, look, here they are. So. <laughs> Coach yeah, Pilot that I, works out. out. At least he still chose for it. He went with his, you know, yeah, he, you he didn't lead them one way and then ditched them for EG. So I like that he stuck to his guns. I like that MSS is on Tidehunter here. He was hitting Ravages with Centaur last game. So what is he going to do with Tide this game? Can only imagine. Looking forward to hearing your words about it. Thank you very much, Sheever. All right, Trent. So what do you think overall? Which draft are you favoring? What's your gut check here? Draft. Oh, man. Destroyed rivalry, eh? Uh, mm -hmm. I think overall, I kind of have to side with this arc one. It just looks so good. I do agree oh. that I think Tiny's going to be a good game. I, I am liking EG's uh, draft coming out of this one, but I certainly can see uh, the road to victory there for forward gaming, if we like to say. But you know, I was just thinking, you know, 2015, right? Bulba, AUI. Bulba was coaching at the time when EG won TI, and mm -hmm. now here they are coaching versus one another. Finishing their drafts and they meet up in the hall outside and say, oh, I see what you did there. I heard how, lots of banter back and forth. How the far cruise. we've come. Huh? I tell you what. But yeah, uh, we've also fun. gone into the game. So please, go Let's us. do it. Come along. S4 on the axe once again here, though, Trent. This is a redemption game. Last match was <laughs> absolutely brutal for S4. And I, I think a combination of he might have made a few missteps. The lane could have gone a little bit better. But forward played around this axe so well. There were not many easy opportunities for S4 to get big calls. And I uh, wonder if they'll be able to do it again here. As uh, effective as the creep ca cutting was, oh my god, SVG, those, <laughs> the fisticuffs. <laughs> totally his attitude. I, I like the Samael Mahalo here. Yeah. Hitting waves. Hang 10, baby. But anyway, uh, I think the problem was that S4 did indeed get quite a bit of farming. He had a five minute or so, uh, 540, I think, on the Vanguard, and then 12 minutes on the Blink Dagger. And you're like, oh man, S4 is ready to get rocking and rolling. And then he like died three times in a row. Yep. Uh, and then I think it was like eight minutes to lead a blade mail or something. You're like, oh, geez, this game fell off real hard. But part of that, I do believe, came down to that Pugna and the really early pressure because that took away so much of the space on the map to farm that what was left was given all to the Invoker uh, and all over to that Luna. So S4 was definitely one who got shafted. He had to try and like move around the map and create a Sunstrike ganks, but couldn't get those uh, popping at all. So so in this game, maybe the Nature's Prophet on the core here for Universe can get that same effect going. Oh my goodness, he's even getting glamour shots now, this Observer. Wow, there he is. Winking and in the flesh. But uh, yeah, so I'm kind of looking to see if Universe can just be Pugna again here, basically. So mid lane, we're we going to have Resolution on the Morph lane. F SVG backing him up. It'll be a 2v1 for now against Sumail to try to salvage this lane to be Morph lane, but right away fly on the Winter Wyvern. We'll make that rotation, use his Arctic Burn, and start chipping away at these heroes, forcing resolution already to eating one of those shit tangos. Yeah, just so low on HP. This is terrifying to be in. Yeah, that's the big question mark for me. Skywrath Axe, an incredible duo to try to put pressure on this Morphling. Not going to be an easy game for Rezo, I don't think. Up top, S4 also taking a lot of damage in this initial wave. Tidehunter has leveled up that gush already. But, like, how fast did they pick this, too, right? Just instant into the Shaman Tide. They were ready. They, they had sort of an idea going here. I don't know if they knew right away if it was going to be an MSS or a Universe Tide Hunter, but MSS, I mean, support Tide benefits. The Gush actually does scale pretty well. If you can, like, level it up and max it mm -hmm. first, it is really good. Seven armor reduction. It can do things like help you head to the Roche Pit. He, of course, has a massive ultimate. It, it kind of reminds you of Brewmaster, where it's like... Oh, the support brew works because he just kind of gets his ulti off and things go well for you. Maybe he needs one item like a blink dagger. Mid lane, resolution. Oh, wow. That's your first blood. Just enough damage there. And it happens like that. A splinter blast to secure the kill. Fly with some bonus gold. 358. Get this one started. He might have that Eye of Scotty cosmetic, but a uh, rough start there for Rezo. And down bottom now, Arteezy will actually get a kill on the universe. I'm way in the back there. Yeah, we're thinking about this uh, possibilities of the Skyrath, but just Skyrath Arc Warden. I mean, mm -hmm. same logic. It is constant, annoying spam being thrown out, and even the Treant's not enough to help deal with the Spark Wraith harass. Annoying spam that you can't really get away with, away from. Universe TPs back into the lane, and right away, crit hits him with some damage. The out of clarity, so I think we're going to see our Skywrath take that free oh, yeah. first class <laughs> ticket back to the well. The beautiful sight. You know, the the OG hero is. here. Shout out to the big bad bird, the man himself, starting this trend off. 
Courier mid. It'll be okay for now. A resolution taking a lot of damage. Sumel not able to finish off the kill, but asserting their dominance over this squishy morphling. Yeah, this uh, this tiny game already looked good, and you're like, okay, how do we stop this tiny? What do we do? Okay, we'll, we'll put two heroes mid versus the tiny. But that bringing in the wyvern just suddenly, it feels so much worse now. Yeah. Like, it was it's already going to be bad. Damage. <laughs> but uh, through all this, Rezo is still getting those last hits, right? He's 11 and 2. So, see if he can uh, try and keep that up. But uh, at the current moment, all that damage on the tiny just allows Sumail to control this lane and keep it out of reach for Rezo. Exactly, and it just gets worse from here. It feels like, you know, Tiny's burst damage scales very well with uh, some of those early levels. He's already picked up that regeneration rune in the bottle. Down on this bottom lane, Universe still taking a lot of harassment, but able to survive through it this go around. Salve up Rezo there, and yeah, MSS just chasing us far away. Mm -hmm. Gotta okay. use the camp there, try and put out some damage back there, but. Uh, not great. I mean, no one's just in the lane, right? That, that doesn't feel too fabulous. Yeah, I think Yawar is pretty happy with that. A free farming run. S4 is not winning this fight. There's no way MSS gets this kill. There's no way, Trent. The battle hunger move speed plus the boots will be enough. Now the Sal. Oh, hello. Almost kind of on the way back, though. He's got boots himself. Meanwhile, the poor nature's prophet has to TP back. Tough lane for him. And back to the mid. Resolution continuing to struggle. Probably going to have to eat this next healing salve as well. I have to say, much like last game where they were kind of trading a free game on Inspector versus a free game on an Axe, this doesn't feel too great to be trading free Marana for Arc Warden. I feel like the Arc Warden, you know, getting off to this very early start, quick Necro, quick into the Midas thereafter, yeah. Sounds like a pretty bad way to start your game, especially when the Tiny is the other core that's doing well. I, I definitely think that S4 is the least important one. See a setup in the mid. Shackles onto Sumail, but flies right there with an Arctic Burn as well as a Splinter Blast. Is Tiny safe? I would agree with you, though. Uh, definitely more afraid of an Arc Warden than a Marana, especially how this series has panned out so far. We've seen the power of this Arc Warden if he gets that momentum. We'll see S4 surrounded by three. That's a lot of creeps, though. SVG with the shackles. He's a little <laughs> too close, and that'll be a dead Shadow Shaman. Oh, at the Resolution same time, also though. fell. Yep. Samael gets himself a kill. Looked like a crit moved in there with the Ancient Seal and the passive shot to help seal that one off. Advantage for EG there. S4 getting a small stroke of luck, perhaps, that he was close enough. Despite being stuck in the shackles, that counter helix to find him a kill. Got that kill before he went down, so got a little bit of extra experience to his name. Yeah, MSS coming mid. Okay, they're gonna go with the arrow, the leap. Two males should be done for here. Other shock, bringing him low, and you are actually the one to bring him down. So a nice early rotation from this Marana. So they're gonna put Rezo in the top lane. They're gonna pull a full lane swap. Yeah, taking a page of the old EG book. That radiant off lane feels very secure. I mean, they had to do something. This Morphling was absolutely struggling. Yeah. Marana, uh, much better suited to deal with this duo mid. Oh, as I say that, he <laughs> takes a lot of damage. Able to survive, but dominance has been asserted. Oh, and uh, even an Arcane Rune down bottom there. Or a Skywrath Mage, perhaps one of the most obnoxious oh. ones. But he's going to be giving up to his best buddy there, Sumail, once again on these early phase boots. Sharing is caring, Trent. And now S4. Found be in trouble. Once here. again, Universe. Using that global presence, get picked up by the cold embrace. Is this actually going to be enough to keep S4 alive? Does not look like it. Universe stuck in the trees. He'll just TP out as Skywrath rotates in. Forward, tie it up for a piece. Even though he doesn't get the save there, I feel like Fly is just having such an impactful game right now in this one Wyvern. Getting these cold embraces to delay that kill, all that pressure on the mid lane. And maybe with these points in Splinter Blast, he can help delay top with his axe. He is wrapping in behind here with the Skyrath Mage. Some potential here with the Silence. SVG still very low, but they're not going to go for it. Resolution. Oh, SVG. He just gets caught oh. out here by S4. Yep. Spins. This isn't going to be great. Fly able to finish him off with another Splinter Blast. Resolution does have some stick charges here and the Infuse Rain drops. Be able to survive, but still a tough time for this Morphling. Man, with the angle he took there, that probably won't even give away the ward, honestly. Now the Moonlight Shadow. Home. Where's your war headed? Right now, this is just an open lane mid for Sumail, so. Yeah, what is this game? Very odd to have so many of these open lanes. 
uh, this early in the game, but it feels like there's always one on map so far, and all these rotations away from Arteezy, and yet he still holds very high in the old net worth chart behind the Moran at this point. You are still number one, despite going for a rotation there. We're gonna find the opening with the Moonlight Shadow, and back to farming we go. We've seen how good uh, Ford have been in terms of offering up some space uh, to uh, help those supports catch back up. Yep. And we'll see if they can do it again here with MSS. Obviously, it was pretty important on a Centaur Warrunner. I'd argue maybe even more so on a Tide Hunter. Yes. Uh, getting close to level 5 on the Tide. MSS actually holding on to a point. Top we'll see lane, up top. Though. Universe using that teleportation again, looking for a kill onto Crit. Trying to find his way through the trees, but Resolution will waveform in and bring him down. There is a Tempest double up here, though. SVG does get off a set of Shackles, and but five. again, and the oh, Splinter Blast man. all are there. Gives the kill to the Tempest double, too. I wonder why everyone's such a good pick this game. Certainly feeling his impact thus far. Necronomicon, it's out on Arteezy. This is just the beginning, Trent. Yeah, he has no boots, though, so diving this deep, he's probably dead. MSS comes in from behind. There's a gush to start things off. Yawar leaping all around. Starstorm for some extra damage. Arteezy with the TP will be interrupted as SVG comes in with a shackle. Oh, get those necros. Gold handed over Sumail down here, though. Wants to punish. Thinking about a toss play with crit, perhaps? Thinking I heard, about I it. You might use that damage, yeah. Well, they're going to go right in on the Shadow easy. Shaman. Easy pick off for Sumail. Not sure if they'll be able to find much more here, but. Meanwhile, up top, Universe and Resolution push into the tower, and that will be a tier one down going the way of the Morphling. And this is what you're hoping for, I think, right now in this game. Get that Pugna esque hero, Rezo. Pretty low. S4 is only level five, though. So no calling blade. Yeah, they can just drive him back. No real commitment possible. That'll be uh, nearly six here for MSS, but Crit will snag it first. Guys are rotated out with Skywrath Mage. And Smell thinking about the Blink Dagger first game. I think Blink or Shadow Blade are going to be quite fine. Both just designed to try and pick off this Nature's Provident and Morphling when most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Feels like the Blink is a little more standard. I think we've seen that first more commonly. Down bottom though, we're going to see a chase onto Crit. More Shackles come out. Magnetic Field trying to buy him some oh, time. That's going to be four bounties again at the 10 minute mark. I think that's what happened last game too. Right when things were starting to look very good for EG. Ford had four, uh, all four bounties picked up. Winner's Curse, a lot of damage onto SVG, not quite enough for a kill. Ooh, that was that's very liberal with the tips. The price is mine. He's feeling good after that last game. Trying to uh, keep up the momentum, I suppose. Vanguard on the way for S4, much later than last game. It was about 10 and a half minutes. See that Vitality Booster picked up. Ah, oh, man. The uh, difference when your axe can't just creep cut. Yeah. Staggering, truly. Still not bad farm for the axe, though. And our Tide Hunter is now six. Some options for MSS. Deploy the big team fight mechanic. They're looking for the kill top. They have the smoked up tiny and Skywrath Mage, but resolution. Hey, uh, seem to think something's not quite right here. Where is that tiny? Oh, Haven't seen him in a while. Again, won't connect. He's just outside scan. of it. Oh, wow. But they're still hunting. Smoke will break on crit. He says, uh, hello, he's here, but... Waveform TP. No way to get there. Well, great game sense, though, from Resolution. TP's out just in time and goes right back to farming. I gotta love those uh, not panic TP's home or anything. Just right back to farming. And MSS, he's been getting that space, as we were discussing. That's what we've been so good at. That is a core axe, by the way. And this is basically a core Tide Hunter at this point. Yep. It's supposed to be a support, but he's back broken down here as uh, he imagines the farm against S4 going, you know, I think I'm about even with this guy. He's got a mechanism queued up next. All right, you are. You're going to free ball this arrow? He's going to hold out on it. Now there's no Star need. Storm and even Universe going to join this party, get in on some of the experience and transition Ooh. this into a tier one tower push. The Vipes, and they're going to be deployed. That felt a little, if it's not just me, that seemed a little unnecessary. What, calling them Vipes or That's using the ward? Using the snakes, I feel like. This is a very dead tower. I mean, sometimes yeah. the shaman ends up dying and he has snakes. You're like, what? You just throw them down, man. But just felt like, you know, I don't know. They have this forward ward. I feel like it kind of felt like a good moment with me. Push for two. But SVG, yeah. he is a very reserved guy. Avery just chilling. 
I, I think with, with the ward down, you're absolutely right. You almost want them to come try to mount a defense of some sort so you can get that jump, but absolutely they also, secures the tower. I mean, they can't see Sumail, so they never know if maybe he has the blink dagger or something. He's actually mm -hmm. just kind of close. He's he has a so yeah. fully understandable. Very easy to say from our omnipotent perspective when we are clearly not... No, it's a fair point. Definitely the, the timing where you want to be aware of that tiny blink dagger and not give him uh, just a free pick off when you could have gotten an easy tower. Arrow, though, hits S4. Very nicely done by Yawar. That ward up on the high ground, paying some dividends as they'll get another kill on this axe. Now a dominating streak for the Murata. Having a hard day. S4. Well, these, uh, the older offlaners aren't uh, doing too hot. Yawar having a really good game on this Murata so far. It feels like he's been all over the map, but working out. Four, zero, and two. Yeah, constantly securing those kills, so keeping his own net worth up high and just creating more ease of space for resolution. But RTZ looking this to give some more space here. inside the EG. Yeah, so much vision here. Very difficult to try and collapse and defend here from forward gaming. Some eyes on Sume. You know, I think they've seen this blink dagger now. SVG needs to be a little careful. S4 just uh, called a massive wave of treants and Kristama with so much gold. Light Shadow, perhaps looking for a go onto Sumail, but he will blink, blink back to his side of the river before they can catch an initiation. They do have a ward down, though. So pretty good intel there. As the moonlight ends, though, there's an Invis rune on Yuar, too, so could be thinking about a go here. Now it's just S4 continuing to farm up here and trying yeah. not to farm those, uh, or rather feed away those treants this time. The farm he desperately needs only what, less than halfway to the blink dagger at 15 minutes. This is not where you want your axe to be. Snakes are back up, so oh, Sumail, a quick go here, but already got that morph off from Rezo. Just not enough damage. Fading with that ward on his own high ground. Be a little wary of the Ravage here. Level nine Tidehunter. <laughs> you saw the ward instantly pinged from crit too. Uh, they had a ward of their own. I think they got out of the vision before they smoked though, so they might get caught off guard here. In fact, Rez, or RTZ walking down. Smoke still hasn't been popped. SVG leading the charge on his brown boots wind lace right now. Sumail, they're going to break the blink oh, dagger. Arrow bounty. comes in and it will connect as the winner's curse comes out. Universe, he breaks the blink again. There's the Ravage, connects on two. Toss back and SVG will go down. EG with a lot of reinforcements. Their whole squad is here as they grab MSS. Two dead on the side of forward gaming. Looking to pursue into more, but Yawar tosses an arrow. One more leap. He's going to be able to make it out. These bounty rune fights have just become so prevalent as of late. EG ready to respond there. Fly again. Great curse. Much better than this first one in the game, I suppose. But uh, so far, this match just playing pretty much flawlessly on this Winter Wyvern. I feel like he's done everything for his team. He's 2-0 and 5 and just really securing things. Now level 9 because he's just been kind of parking in lanes too. Mm -hmm. And a nice chunk of experience for himself, even over Crick. Yeah, both supports actually doing pretty well in terms of economy. We'll see more rotations mid now for forward. They want to defend this tower. Sumail gets low. Oh, oh I don't know about universe, that one. But that's going to be straight step. S4 decapitates him. Now catches the uh, taunt onto the morphling. Wards come down. And they're going to grab crit on the back line. Yawar getting another one on the scoreboard. Despite universe TPing a little aggressively, hey. they still clean it up. It kind of works. And they get the tower. They defend their own tower and get enemy tier one. Yeah, it takes uh, a lot of attention, some skills thrown down by EG, and they're able to capitalize. I mean, that's taking a fight without Ravage, too. It's difficult enough, so. Snakes will find their use to another tower, but uh, maybe thinking about a little bit more aggression here. As Sumail shows up for the shrine, and they will smoke right away. Why with 1,300 So gold. they have a great ward here. He's the Shaman, the Tide, and the Morphling. Morphling towards the Ancients. Is that where they want to go? Or they want to try just a quick pick on the SVG? Like Take it. the easy one. It'll be the ladder. Yep. Down he goes. Moonlight gonna end up being wasted too because of that. Easy pick for Sumail. I think uh, a blink dagger in the hands of Fly feels particularly scary to carry this game. He's been getting great counter initiations without it. Yeah, it's a bit of a tough call for him this match, actually. Not blink. sure if the glimmer might be better. Oh, it's glimmer. A lot of magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. I kind of like the blink just because of the uh, staying out of Ravage range. They help like turn fights when they try and focus in after Ravage. So I think blink should be the item. 
But speaking of links, S4 will at least have his. And uh, it's been a lot of action coming the way, like, from EG. It, it seems that 4 Gaming kind of stuck playing off of these cooldowns right now, whereas that is not an issue for Evil Geniuses. You have an Axe and a Tiny, the Skywrath Mage, really not a lot of cooldowns they have to play around with whatsoever. And they're all just creating space for RTZ at the moment. They're trying to bait something out here up top, just a creep wave hitting the tower, very casual, hoping that someone's going to TP and respond, that Axe can jump on top of it. S4 will now cave in, grab the wave, and the opposite side, the aggressive act is now coming because they have the Ravage, they have the Snakes, oh. but they're going to arrow the Alpha Wolf. Almost. Close, but no cigar. Neff Ward not going to pay off there. SVG will try and sneak in another one, but he is very much spotted because of this Observer Ward here. Pretty likely to be dewarded. S4 blinking forward. Battle Hunger will be dispelled by the other shock. Not going to get the catch they were looking for there. Meanwhile, wrapping around here, though, Universe on the way out. We'll have teleport in just a second. Be a little bit close, but should be able to make oh, Avalanche man. just barely misses. Whew. Pipe first for our Prophet. I mean, Buckler and Pipe, so just pour a base right into the Crimson. Pipe. Crimson. One of the benefits of Nature's Prophet, of course, pretty much itemized into anything. I mean, they've already got a pretty team fight centric lineup. It'll definitely be better if you just want to TP in the middle with the enemies again. You know, that's the way to build if that's, that's what true. you're doing. Honestly, the Tidehunters going for mech will eventually be Guardian Greaves. They're just very much itemizing for team fights. They want to group up, they want to fight together, they want to use this Ravage to get an edge in the mid game. It's a very small net worth lead for Forge right now, but they're trying to make it a lot more. I think the timing's a little dangerous. I mean, they, they have the lead, right? Like, Sumail hasn't been popping off that hard. He's 4 1 and 3, but it's not like this constant barrage of kill after kill after kill because right. of how much they've been clumping and grouping. And now they're going to snake into the Roche Pit here, finding a great moment because of all this damage. And anytime you have a Morph Link, if there's some way to just tank it or stun him up like this with a five second arrow, Morph is great. This is one of the great benefits to having a Tide Hunter in a scenario like this. EG need to be a little cautious about committing into the pit. Oh, it's getting really awkward though. Rezo's getting bashed up in here. He's kind of low on HP. There's an Axe nearby. A Winter Wyvern now too. Roche still at about 30% HP. They're not killing it that quickly. S4 jumps in. He gets hexed immediately. The Tide Hunter silenced. Being very cautious and waiting for the opportunity to Ravage. Fly jumps in, uses that Winter's Curse. Still all 10 alive. As Arteezy gets caught in the back line, Yawar finds the opening. This is his hero. More silence is coming out on the Tide Hunter. They're not making it easy for MSS, but it doesn't matter. EG so in a little bit of trouble. Attention, MSS. There's the mech. Savage comes out. It does connect on the Tiny as well as S4. Three down on the side of EG. Forward, now headed right back to the pit. Oh, and right back to life. It is S4. And Universe actually TP's right up there. He's, he's ready to just kind of find him. He's going to right click him. Say good luck blinking, dude. Great play from Universe. He's going to make the space needed to secure this Roche for his team. It is going to go down at the 20 minute mark. And Aegis of the Immortal That's, ends up in the hands of Resolution. Very that, nice. That looked like. I mean, love to see how you are played that too, because we talk about the threat of the Ravage, the threat of the black hole from these two big heroes, and never more evident than in a fight like that. Crit, he's one concern, constantly silencing this Tidehunter. It's like, okay, that's great. He, he does keep. Oh. We're watching that. Feels like EG were watching that, and you were just assassinates in the back line there and picks off Arteezy. Yep, the big damage dealer. Could not have been a better hero to 10th pick, I don't think, for you are. Sambol coming out. Here's our fight once again here, but you can see just. Uh, first off, that hex instantaneous when S4 jumps in too. Yeah, really SVG nice with SVG. Just ready and waiting. Keep an eye on the Marana here. She's on the south side of the screen. She just straight up wraps around with the Moonlight Shadow. And we just solos Arteezy on the back line. Yeah. It's a and great movement. Yeah, they're constantly just like stunning up. They even tried like a toss play with S4 to maybe make the save there, but it wasn't enough. And there, another silence. And MSS just keeps rolling on forward. And then finally the uh, closing Ravage there to help guarantee the kills on S4 and Sumail. No surprise to see MSS uh, itemizing eventually towards the Guardian Greaves. He's going to get Blink Dagger first. Speaking of the devil, he gets caught in the mid lane. It'll be a dead Tide Hunter. They slice that watermelon up. Finding things back here, even if they won't have the Aegis, they can at least claim themselves a tower. Ah, but the Moonlight Shadows used, that will likely drive them back. Or can they? Forward gaming. They mount to defense, and that tower will stay up for now. They're trying to do the same thing top, I think, with SVG. Maybe considering throwing down the snake. 
fence here, depending on the fence he sees. And now just a winter wyvern, the wrapper around the backside. There's the hex. Wards come down into a shackle. SVG looking like he can even take a solo kill here. Very but nice Universe move. helps him out with the Wrath of Nature. And now this will be a tier two tower secured. Punishing that uh, attempt mid there from our evil geniuses. Just saying, I don't think they can respond top. Like we've got a couple heroes that can maybe leap in and stun if they try and start some TPs. Mm -hmm. And they'll grab it. And now that is that indeed another aura done here. Pipe and Crimson Guard for Universe. Solution, clearing up some Necronomicon units mid. Well, he's happy to find that additional farm. Really feeling the impact of SVG's Shadow Shaman in this game. He's won six and seven in terms of KDA, but he it just feels like he's generally been in the right place at the right time with those wards at the ready. Unfortunately, when it comes to impact, it feels a lot like last game for old S4. Yeah. Can't seem to get anything going for himself. Last game, I feel like he even actually had an easier game because at least he had the opportunity of Sunstrikes to work off of. And, and he had one, the early farm, too. Yeah, this game, he has the slower farm. He has the Mystic Flares, sure, and he has the Tiny too. In fact, it also looks pretty good, but can't seem to get it. Maybe it's because Crit, like, still bootless, too. Kind of hard for him to get around the map quite as fast. I think some of it is also a testament to the movements of... Oh, there just haven't been easy openings for S4 to catch anyone. He hasn't really been roaming around with crit all that much. Feels like Axe really punishes opponents that are maybe lackluster in their positioning and forward are just not falling victim to that. They are going to find Fly up top. They're going to get hexed again, trying to fly around the trees with the Arctic Burn. Winter's Curse oh, will nice actually play. keep himself alive as he blinks back. Very nicely done. Now back to the mid lane. Double damage on Sumail. Trying to bring down Resolution. They don't have the damage. Now Universe TP's in. They want to turn this one around. Moonlight Shadow's even been oh, the, the floor. Tree grab from the inside of the sprout. <laughs> and it looks like Sumail on the run with a haste rune and a double damage will still survive despite all of that. Meanwhile, Yuar doing Yuar things as he solos down crit. Looks like S4 oh, will catch him for a counter kill. 1200 gold for S4. Wow. Yeah, we're going to call that one not worth, I think, for old you are. Mm, certainly not. Uh, wards do come down, though, from the Rasta. No, don't worry, there's a magnetic field, though. And Universe. You need to tank up, too, versus this Arc Warden and Tiny. He's going to go for the plus N armor instead of the Treants. I feel like Treants summons definitely falling off in terms of the talent. And oh, we'll see if the armor can save him. Though. Mail inbound, it's too much magic damage, but he actually lives, compliments of the pipe and the Crimson Guard. They'll probably be able to bring him down the Sprout TP. They've got the Taunt on the outside. And S4 secures the kill for his team, but Universe absolutely makes him work for it. Well, we'll call that the Space Talent right there. Space Talent. That only survived longer than one would expect. Now Rezo. Uni oh yeah, he walked up to the high ground here. I think he'll be able to make it out, but not the dream. Remember, he still does have Aegis, although it's about to expire in a couple seconds here. He's going to get a free regen rune out of it. Timing could, could be better. So in terms of objectives, uh, only the bottom tier two really remaining here and, and uh, the first pokes into high ground. So you would be hoping to try and take a tier three before that next Roche. You might be able to take care of the shrines and make it relatively easy for yourselves. You're forward gaming. If you're uh, EG, you'd love to just get a second tower. That would probably be pretty good. That would definitely feel good. Um, Arteezy's farm is still really impressive, though, Trent. 17k net worth. Next highest is 12k on the morph lane. Yeah, the, I mean, the start he was given was just he essentially had a free lane for yeah. an incredibly long time. Free lane all the way from Necro into Midas. So the, it's no wonder that he's so farmed and far ahead, but. And they transitioned this into. I, I gotta wonder about Samael, I feel like it's just what what happened, you know, he's just he's getting countered, I guess, by the idea of just all these auras built up by the Prophet. Like that's a hero he's kinda hoping to pick off. And, and he the smoke ganks that they've been attempting. Again, there's another ward down here. I feel like every time that they're grouping up it's gonna be spotted, but uh, they'll find the D war, but still you can't just like smoke up and now go, you know? Absolutely. Sumail basically just been able to pick on this Shadow Shaman. That's the only target that's been able to fall victim to the combo. Everyone else is a little too tanky. I guess Morphling, depending on the scenario, but Rezo's had very good positioning. He stayed back and not been feeding away his life. Still a very tight game. Only a 1k net worth favor for forward. 15-14. Not surprising to see this elimination game three. Both teams 
playing uh, like they need it. Who will be the second North American team to join J-Storm in heading home? A lot on the line in this one. Here, there was some vision here in the mid lane, so kind of saw some heroes mulling about, then suddenly no heroes, so perhaps some concerns. And yeah, the ping comes out from Sumails. They saw Rezo, who was not smoked, fading in to the end is so near the Roche pit. And the Radiant also scanning, they find some heroes to ward on the high ground. SPG gets the vision. MSS with a huge ravage on the whole team. Crit goes down first, and the follow up damage is there. Resolution finishing off as far as the rest of forward chase down EG. Arteezy falls, fly buys himself some time with the cold embrace, but he is out of options, except the Quinter's Curse. That'll buy him a little more time. The blink away, he will live. But it a disastrous fight for EG. Three down, a perfect ravage from MSS. It's a fiver. Yeah, uh, you can't get any better than that when you're playing the old Tide Hunter, but the person who's really impressing me all these engagements, it's Yuar. Again, he's identifying exactly the target he needs to go for. That time, it's Fly. Fly, he's on the outskirts of that ravage. He's the person who can turn that fight around just with a single curse. They might be able to bring down someone like Rezo or perhaps Yuwai right away himself, but he pops the BKB, just runs right at that Winter Wyvern. Some buybacks available for EG. Both dead heroes can get back into the game. Nature's Prophet just survives through the damage. The Forward, a little bit low on resources. Sumail caught by the Cold Embrace. Oh, Escort jumps in, but the Hex from SVG. It he's him. there, and out goes the TP. Oh. Universe survives. Uh, SVG is gonna feed his life away. Say, thank me, not my team. So worth Hand it. Hand the tips over, my they team. Force the buyback and only get the Shadow Shaman. Beautiful Talk about next. the right place at the right time. After all that, though, that uh, it doesn't mean they weren't able to secure any sort of a, a tier three or anything. But oh, Universe. Yep. Well, he's been dodging the ganks from Sumail. Okay. Not so much from the Arc Warden there, so Arteezy will try and further his position at the top. That's a lot of gold, actually. 778. Yeah, not too bad for EG. S4 gets a free courier, a couple clarities on it, but the dunk will find it. Now Resolution, he's going to get caught as well. No way! Waveform down to the bottom. I don't know how he lived through that, but he did. <laughs> Seriously, how did he live? I didn't just kind of... I mean, a combination of his item build and then a little bit of pure luck at the end that they're just... Boy, weren't enough spins or enough damage back on him. I mean, okay. He got real low with that Manta into the waveform. I have to say, though, uh, that whole fight with the five hero Ravage, SVG is what made the whole thing possible. That's true, with that ward. That was a nice play. Rotation into the tree line and putting that little ward down. That little guy, he set it up. MSS was there, just there for the alley oop. Oh, at this point, Roche, uh, ooh, I believe that almost instantaneous because uh, it's right up now. Yeah, it was a quick one. So we still have everything available for the Radiant, uh, except Moonlight Shadow, I suppose. But of course, the uh, Snakes and the Ravage being the most important two. Guard of Dreams up at 150 gold for MSS. They will jump onto the Shadow Shaman. Be a quick pick onto SVG. Oh, but Sumail arrowed. Potential Ravage coming out as well. The Silence about to expire. It's going to catch two. They bring down Sumail. Fly likely to go down next. S4 trying to make it away, but he will get chased down by the Morphling. Although the TP out will be successful. It's a one for two. Forward finding the advantage there. Yeah, but they use that, that winner's curse too. So if they do head into the Roche now, one of the key tools for Evil Genius is not going to be available. Things from Rezo come out. And they still have the Rost awards. Could be a blessing in disguise that the Rosta got picked first. He's going to be able to come back and they'll have that option to move into the Roche pit. I mean, they could so also inclined. just keep running forward here. MSS takes a lot of damage as the Mystic Flare comes out on S4. There's nothing left for him, Grabs though. the Marana's. They have enough damage to bring him down. Ooh. UR falls first. MSS on the high ground as Resolution comes in. Crit goes down. He'll buy back. Universe on the low ground. Trying to put in as much damage as he can, but forward running low on resources. Rezo turns into Ask. Axe reinitiates. Moonlight Shadow comes out as Rezo is getting very low. Oh, they're crumbling right now. They're going to put the snakes in there to try and finish off S4 and get something, but now it's Universe trying to TP on home. Forward oh, losing a lot here. The shackles from SVG will allow his friend to escape. SVG will also get away unscathed. Forward minimizing their losses, but feeling the power of that arc forward, and he's got the Scythe of Ice now. It made a big difference. That's a really costly buyback on your big snowballing core, though. You are falling down even behind Universe now at this point. Not progressing a whole lot past that BKB. Things just got a 
little bit weird there. Really did. I, MSS keeps on chasing, and I didn't think they'd have the damage in the end. Yeah, you can see MSS kind of like wanders up this hill, and they throw down like the Mystic Flare and everything. And I'm like, okay, MSS is dead, but then my concern was that they wouldn't be able to actually finish your wire with the axe, but that blade mill to the vast majority, and then a couple of lobs in there a lot of from Arteezy. And then Rezo gets kind of oddly shoved off to the side because, I mean, there's like three heroes essentially with a Tempest double, so it feels weird for him to go in there. But uh, now a Hex there and a long range arrow as once again Arteezy will find Universe in the almost exact spot. And they grab Fly on the other side. So one for one around the map, but another advantage for EG. They've now taken the net worth lead. You look at that gold graph and it tells a pretty scary story for forward fans around the world or maybe just in North America. Eh, it's not too bad though. I mean, at least in terms of the net worth, it's never been too high one way or the other. I think the major concern it's for true. me is just the and single. Now buyback, it's uh, kind of been mitigated. So. Yeah, the single target focus of like four gaming, if they can just take down Arteezy, I say it's so easy. But yeah, if they can just take down I mean, the Arc he is a massive percentage of EG. Yeah, he's a uh, 10K net worth <laughs> up on the Morphling. I'd certainly say so. Tempest double up on the high ground, the Hex, right clicks, but Moonlight Shadow will be there. He tries to double against Hex. He's like, there's no value with this Tempest double here, but down it goes. Really feels like EG are taking control. I hope you guys like Roche fight. We got a good one brewing for you here. Got the Ravage and the Guardian Greaves now. This Tide has fallen victim to a lot of silences from that ancient seal. Will be a different scenario in this next fight. So, also, the Aether Lens out on fly. Huge item for this Winter Wyvern. There's pretty much two heroes that love these scenarios. Uh, and their Arc Warden and Nature's Prophet, right? Like, he's mulling about the Roche Pit fights, and everyone's trying to stay close and keep getting good wards down. Counter their sentries with your sentry and their OBS with your OBS and all those. But while that's happening, where where does this uh, Nature's Prophet want to be? Else. Pushing these other lanes, being ready to TP into the fight if it actually pops off. And Arteezy, he also wants to be punishing here with his Arc Warden. So far, though. So much pressure on Arteezy right now. Both Sumail and S4, very low on net worth. Feels like their item progression has really stymied here. It is all about Arteezy in these fights. He's going to go for the Daedalus, so big time damage. But they have to take these engagements properly to. To realize their the power of their warden. MSS. Got about 50 HP from the Tempest double. 50 yeah. HP? 50 percent. 50 percent. Keyword there. <laughs> Pretty important that phrase. But the point is the same. Tempest yes. double is scary. I'm just trading back and forth. The, the real RTZ in the bottom lane, and then it gets shoved back out by the real universe. Ooh, that is a lot of damage there now in Arc War, and he's already been lobbing them from the back line, so a lot of pressure on MSS to try and find that moment. The saves that they have are the counter initiations of the Wyvern and the Axe, so he's hoping to get at least one of them in that Ravage along with the real RTZ. Right now, only one BKB out for EG. It's on S4's Axe. Obviously, the go to tool against the Ravage. Speaking of which, you can see Resolution also very close to his BKB. Three ends in the Roche Pit. The Universe is keeping eyes here to make sure they know if EG sneaks in. Arcane, Rune, Arc Warden. Absolutely disgusting. Uh-oh. So many Spark Wraith. Night Shadow. Finally be the move to break things up here. Both teams hungry for Roche right now. The smoke forward. Oh, a stray arrow. Does connect onto S4. This kind of reveals the They're smoke. They're not pulling the trigger. Oh, the double sentries placed down. Winner's Curse onto the Shadow Shaman. And on the other side, the Morphling gets caught. He goes down immediately. Buyback, but they'll also lose this VG. It is a 4v5. EG finally getting this opening they've been waiting for so long. You too many sentries, though, from SVG. He doesn't have the buyback to return to this game with the snakes. Maybe something they can, they can use to try and fight in the pit. They still have Retaining. Ravage. They really want to go. They have to let this one go, I think. Two males just playing right inside those spark rays, trying to force the fight against them. Universe is already down bottom. Doesn't even look like they're going to get a trade out of this. John at about 50% already. That bottom tier two is pretty low. We've got a lot of Treants pushing in. Yeah, missing the plus four Treants right about now, I'd say. The 10 armor hasn't been helping them on the, <laughs> the Arc Warden ganks, that's for sure. Yep. 
like the positioning here from EG, making sure there's no smoke rotation, just letting Arteezy and S4 sit inside the pit. They yeah. do manage to get that bottom tier two, so small gain for forward, but EG now vastly in control, 8K hey. net worth advantage. Also take the tier one top. They might just keep this train rolling and look for a tier two. There's a line here from SVG. He's saying we're trading. Just try and run down bot, only show the nature of we're having. Okay, they're gonna the more playing, but they're gonna try and throw snakes on the high ground down here. More play. A little damage for that Tempest double. Resolution really needs a BKB. Alright, SV barely staying up creep wave vision here. He is moving forward. Trying to create some sort of an opportunity for them here. The real Arteezy pushing forward in the lane. Be a little careful. He could get caught here. They ping it out. The TP, they don't have eyes. Only he gone for the other high ground. Now on the other side, Ichi, they've made it to the tier three. They've got a double creep. They force a glyph immediately. And this plan from forward to stay aggressive might not be as successful as they hope. Oh, and they Shadow even send the RTZ Tempest double in. A lot of damage on the MSS. They'll relegate him to the well. They're they trying to make a play bottom of these snakes. See if they can count. And in fact, their tier three does survive. The strategy might work here. Have it base quite yet in crit. Feels like they need a smoke or something on MSS. Like he needs to like try and wrap around and cancel TPs or something to Ravage if that's really the big play they're going for. SVG being a little bit conservative here with the wards. Making sure he doesn't overcommit in case they have to come back. Arrow will connect on the Tempest double, but the tier three does go down. Once again, favoring evil geniuses. Oh my God, this Tempest double is doing so much work on MSS. This Tide is gonna live, but they force a Moonlight Shadow now. So oh, back down bottom, looking at crit. They want a quick blast here. BG charges in. He's going to be able to grab him with the hex. Resolution's there with the follow up, but they'll let him live as they see S4 TP in. There's the BKB, Blade Mail. Sumail also joining the party. SVG likely to be the first to fall, and he will. Now the Morphling caught by the Yules. The follow up hex, there is no option for Rezo. Forward get completely punished. Two down, no buybacks. Now on the other side, Arteezy with the Tempest double might be able to find a kill on the MSS. Guardian Greaves are there, and you are will have the damage. Unable to find, find B from Rezo. Can't get his moment. Brutal for the Morphling. Impressive stuff from EG, just taking that Roche fight and moving forward from there. The desperation plays being attempted. S4 not able to grab that snag there, but. Arc Warden getting to that stage where he's feeling pretty close to he's capped out. Butterfly queued up, still with the Aegis in tow. Definitely could pick up the Moon Shard, but Arteezy is absurdly farmed. He Trent. truly is. He's 34K doubling up. net worth. Yeah. Doubling up at 40 minutes, no less. That's pretty hard to leave, especially because this Morphling is like, well, pretty well farmed, you know? Yeah. But he's a Morphling and he's an Aegis Prophet. Back to kind of fulfills both, both roles, frankly. Yeah, with with this Tempest double just it's, charging in, relegating three heroes to the well within their own base. And he just like drops some vision down here casually too. Throws some spark rates all around. I mean, that's another free tier three tower. They've got a Ravage. That's Don't want to fight. Brad and Tom too. They Looking look to be very out of good for EG. Still 25 seconds till this Morphling's back. They know the buyback's on cooldown. Not going to be up for another three minutes. Oh, they, uh, they're playing for a bottom lane of Rax that still has a tier two. This feels terrible for them right now, but nothing they can do without Rezo. They just know that it's not going to be a good fight. And the Arc Warden Tempest double just continues to control three heroes at once. Unreal what this hero can do with this kind of farm. Top lane of barracks secured for EG. One lane standing between them. Well, I guess a tier two and a lane standing between them and Megas. 17k net worth. Starting to feel like EG will have this one and less forward. Dig deep. It's just falling off versus that first work fight. So what's the play for forward? They need to start assuming some risk to try to get back in this one. What's the option here, Trent? Now the pickoff situation is very difficult because the Eric Warden is able to play so safe. I mean, he can basically just stick with his team right now. At this point, he also has boots of to travel too, so he can be uh, completely on the opposite side of the map and still join with both himself and his clone, which is very dangerous for the side of forward gaming. And our he's just going to see himself right back to the base to so guard that lane. Upgraded to the BOT's level two now. Easy can just TP into the front line. 
Smoke used as the Aegis gets reclaimed. Forward, looking for an opening here. They will rotate towards that bottom lane. Not gonna find many enemy heroes, though. It's essentially desperation maneuvers, hoping that it's gonna be an Arc Warden try and gank his Nature's Prophet. There's a 10 second BKB now on RTZ at 43 minutes. Be very disappointed to see that is not the real Arc Warden. Tempest double. But he will clear out the creep wave. And that's going to stop this push party. And look at the dire scan, too. Just trying to figure out exactly where are they lurking. What is the play they're attempting to make? And when that scan doesn't hit on their own plateau, S4 just circles exactly where forward are playing. Reza revealing himself in the wave, likely to confirm his suspicions here. Easy doing a great job just delaying this push. I'm surprised they even got one creep wave here, to be honest, but with the Arc Warden, very hard to just drop snakes and hope for something. SVG would certainly be doomed to die. He has no buyback, and even if he got a tier 3, it seems pretty unlikely they're going to find their way to the top shrine to do anything about it. Right. EG so patient, just waiting. They, they know that eventually someone from 4 Games is going to walk out here, and they're actually going to smoke to meet them now. Wraparound play, Universe, the only one, not with the rest of forward. Always teleport in. How will fast will you want to be this BKB? Arrow on the front line. TZ, that's the Tempest double. Jumps in onto the Tide Hunter. Hex, S4 is there. He's got a decent call. He's made up for the missteps prior as Resolution and MSS get obliterated. Yeah, we'll call that redemption. He also scouts at the Marana for the Hex from our TZ. S4 redeemed. Triple Three down. kill. Put a stamp on game, game three here. Two without buyback. Yawar does have his available, but feels like the beginning of the end for forward gaming. The line has been drawn on an EG. They want to take this tier two and secure their megas. SVG looking for the TP home. He will not make it in time. The Tempest double gets there. Good night for Rasta. Now the EG tipping each other. There is uh, starting to feel a little jovial. I'm sure Fly playing inside the base at this point, forcing the buyback out of your wire here. Evil geniuses, tier two, and then one last lane. There is a glyph available for forward. They are going to lose this tier two. Back door is broken, and Sumail will just whomp it down with that big old willow he's picked up. Morphling does have a buyback, won't be forced to use it, so we will have two lives in this next engagement, but this tier three falling very quickly just to Arteezy. And they're gonna find with bots two up top with S4, they got Universe. Oh, oh down he goes. They buyback. played so well around this Arc Ward in this game. Like, uh, they were stalling a little bit here, but Arteezy, of course, was always at the top, and even though the other two cores were well below almost everyone on forward gaming, it didn't matter. They were so ready and the time counted win that big fight in their own base. And there they go, onto oh. Arteezy. Ravage, they know how important this kill is, and they will bring him down, and it's a good setup, but they've got very yeah. little gas left in the tank. The BKB Morphling locked down by S4. Resolution will turn into Axe himself. Winner's Curse onto the Nature's Profit. Not S4 doing to too follow. much damage, but sets up for the Axe. Gets the call on two. It's a dead Profit, soon to be a dead Tide Hunter. Buyback now used by MSS. This is going to be the final hold for forward. The Morphling also follows suit. Buyback used there, but Megas will be secured despite the Rost Awards being used. EG with all five still alive, tightening their grasp around forward, feeling very good about their trek through the lower bracket. Soon to eliminate their other NA brethren. The buybacks have been used. It's 5v3 forward, ready to give it all they've got, but it's not much. Tempest double, relegating the three back, back towards the well as the tier fours get chopped down. A familiar sight here. The old Tempest double running into the fountain. Finishes off SVG. It wasn't harsh uh, enough already. And Samuel ready to just throw some people out of the well here as MSS one last leap in there. And final hurrah. Will be the end of the watermelon and the GG will be called by Yawar as the throne expires. An intense three-game series, but it is evil geniuses that secure the win. Your Hassan and forward Bull. gaming will be eliminated. Hassan Bull, seven champions. Evil mm -hmm. geniuses. Sumail coming out 